Welcome to week 13 science. I will be demonstrating tilt and sinkers today for classical conversation cycle one, week 13. My goal is that every week I'll be able to share a Bible verse that goes with our science experiments. For our tilt activity, we're learning about why the Earth's tilt affects the seasons. And so I shared Ecclesiastes 3.1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. So to start with, we have our globe and I have a dowel running through the center here from the North to South Pole. And what we're gonna be demonstrating to the students is that the earth does not sit up and down like this, it actually tilts at a 23.5 degree angle. Now the cheat for this is that it's at approximately 130 on a clock. And so when you're showing them this, it'll be easy to just kind of tilt that to uh, 130. So for the tilt activity, we are going to be making an earth on a popsicle stick. Uh, the younger kids can focus on coloring the earth and you can talk about the North and South Pole for the older kids, it would probably be beneficial to them to use a protractor to actually measure the 23.5 degree tilt of the Earth on its axis. Um, a really great way to look at that is to use a globe. As you can see, the Earth is not up and down. It is on a tilt. We have a flashlight to mimic the sunshine. You can have one of these students move the globe and we have a 24 hour day with the sun moving from east to west in the sky as the earth is turning from west to east. So when you're doing the activity, um, there's no wrong way to tilt the earth. The tilt is going to determine what the season is. So if the North Pole is facing away from the Sun, then it is going to be winter in the Northern Hemisphere. If you have the Earth tilted this way, then it's going to be summer in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, you will see a lot of different uh, orbital examples online. Um, some of them have it facing right, some of them have it facing left. You have to remember that we're not a 2D Earth. Um, you know, we're seeing it from multiple sides as it goes around. So for uh, this experiment, your Earth can be tilted either way as long as the relation of the poles goes with the season. So for the actual tilt activity, after they have created their Earth and it is on a 23.5 degree tilt, we have an activity to show where the uh, different poles are pointing. So we are going to start what is happening right now in Georgia, winter. Um, I have labels for the kids, for you. Um, you can do a trivia game. You can put the earth in different positions around the sun to um, promote discussion on what part of the earth is it winter or summer in right now. Um, so some of the questions on here is what season is it now where you live? Look at the globe. What season is it in Australia? So right now it is summer in Australia. Now with the northern hemisphere pointed away from the rays of the sun, it is going to be warmer down in the southern hemisphere. So we are having summer in South Africa, in South, South America. Now as we move, now the Earth continues to stay tilted at its 23.5 degree axis. We move into spring and then summer again. So when we are on this side of the sun in our orbit around the sun, the rays are closer to North America. And so in this position, it will be summer in the Northern Hemisphere, and it will be winter in the Southern Hemisphere. Why do we have seasons? 
because of the Earth's tilt. Why does the tilt of the Earth affect the seasons? Because as the Earth orbits the Sun, the Northern Hemisphere is either positioned toward the Sun or away from the Sun. So for part two of week 13 science, we are doing sinkers, and this is gonna be just the classic instructions from Janice Van Cleve's Incredible Experiments book. So I'm gonna be using a three cup Ziploc container. I'm gonna be filling that up with two cups of water and then adding potter's soil and paper clips. Now the reason I'm using the potter's soil is that it also has a lot of plant decay inside, so that will give us some discussion on why things are also floating inside as well regarding density. The paper clips will mimic our placer or then we're gonna put the lid on, make sure that's on tight, and then shake it up. So here's our three cup container after it's been sitting about five minutes. Now this is a little difficult to see because it is dark, but Right here, we have a soil line. All of the paper clips are down near the bottom with the soil on top of them. Now, turning this over, you will see some of the paper clips. Thankfully, I got colored ones. So we have some yellow and red and blue spots in there. Now, because of the dirt, Every experiment I did this with was really clouded. This is one that I did last night. So this has been sitting about 12 hours and you can see the water is still really murky. But with this one, I have a really nice soil layer on top and then trying to get different colors, I put in, this is red sand green aquarium rocks, and then you see the paper clips in there as well. So with doing um, the classic sinkers experiment, I think instead of using the paper clips, it looks like this red sand might give us um, a better view for the kids, but the paper clips are important because those are metal and the experiment itself is on placer or so I'm gonna actually try this experiment a couple more times and see if I can get a really good color differentiation and see what material will work best. But when you come in on Tuesday to do the experiment, um, you will have definitely soil and then um, either sand, rocks, and or paper clips to put in. It'll be the same procedure. Put it in, put the water in, shake it up, and let it sit. So in closing, your sheet will have some discussion questions on there for the students. Uh, today, we are going to be geologists. So you will ask the students, what does a geologist do? What makes something sink? What makes something float? Um, hypothesize what is going to happen when you shake up all of the ingredients in the jar and then discuss what happened. Um, because the paper clips and or rocks, minerals, are more dense than the soil, they are gonna sink to the bottom. This is called a placer deposit. The soil is lighter, and so it falls onto the top layer. Uh, parts of the soil may float. Uh, that is because it is plant life decay, which makes up soil, wood, uh, parts of leaves, and it is lighter than sand, silt, or clay that makes up the rest of the dirt. Um, the differing weights of dirt and rocks in a soil sample is why a miner or a gold panner uses a sluice box, like this one shown, to separate dirt and rock and to find gold because the gold is heavier and is caught in the sluice box or a gold pan ridge as it sinks to the bottom. Thanks for watching. I wanted to show you the science tutor notebooks that I've created for our community this year. There will be one in each classroom. Each week has its own tab and anything that you will need for the science experiment as far as instructions or visuals go for the students will be in each binder. Um, if you have any questions for me as a science tutor or things that you would like me to do, just please leave a note inside the binder 
and when I collect all the materials at the end of the day, I can address those, um, get you what you need. I am here to help you. Thanks so much.